Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topics are limit pricing and asymmetric Bertrand competition. This is going to be a short one, so let's get right to it. We're studying a standard model of Bertrand competition with one modification. We're still having the firms competing on price, so each firm is simultaneously choosing a price P. The difference here is that the firms have distinct marginal costs of production. In the past, we've assumed that the firms were symmetric, so they had identical marginal costs. Here, without loss of generality, we're going to assume that firm two has a larger marginal cost of production. So C2 is larger than C1. Like before, we have a single consumer, and that consumer will have a reservation price V larger than C2. The idea being there that this consumer could potentially do business with either of the firms. If we had that reservation price, say, between C1 and C2, well, that means that firm two is never really in competition for this consumer's business. They would never be able to come up with an agreement that would suit both of them. So if we have that reservation price instead larger than firm two's marginal cost, then in isolation, firm one would want to do business with the consumer. And in isolation, firm two would want to do business with that consumer. Of course, in this model, they're actually competing with one another on price. So let's think about what happens in this. And in particular, what we can see in this model with asymmetric marginal costs of production is an equilibrium price as large as C2, as large as firm two's marginal cost. This is known as limit pricing. Firm one in this equilibrium is charging just enough to eliminate all of firm two's potential profits. As a consequence, firm two is not going to become an active player in the market and all of the profits are going to go to firm one. And this is a distinction from what we normally see with symmetric Bertrand competition, where both firms have the same marginal cost of production. In those models, we have the equilibrium price set at the marginal cost of production, which is equivalent. And as a consequence, neither firm is able to profit. Here, the more competitive firm, as it were, the firm with the lower marginal cost, is able to drive the other firm out of the market, and it can eke out a profit in the process because it is charging a price set to that higher firm's marginal cost of production. So whatever the difference between those two marginal costs is, is the amount of profit that this firm one is bringing in. If those differences are very small, then firm one will not get much of a profit. But it is possible for firm one to get quite a bit of profit. If you think of the marginal cost of firm one as being a very small amount and the marginal cost of firm two as being a very large amount. Again, that's in contrast with what we observe with symmetric Bertrand competition, where there are no profits whatsoever for the firm. To understand why this is an equilibrium, Let's suppose that both firms choose C2 as their price, and the consumer, being indifferent, chooses to buy from firm one with certainty. Let's think about profitable deviations for firm two. Well, in fact, there aren't any. If firm two were to set a higher price, then that would mean that all of the business will still go to firm one. So that's not a profitable deviation. If firm two were to set a lower price, then that would actually get firm two some of this business. In fact, it would assuredly get the consumer to shop with firm two. The problem is though, that if you set the price lower than your marginal cost, you will have a negative profit from that transaction. So firm two cannot profitably deviate. Firm one cannot profitably deviate either. If firm one were to set a higher price, then it's giving away the business. It's not going to be able to sell the product to the consumer. If it sets a lower price, well, this will unnecessarily lower Firm 1's profit. Firm 1 is currently getting the business. Its profit is equal to the 
price that it is setting minus its own marginal cost. And that is going to be some sort of positive amount. And if you set the price lower, well, you might still get some sort of profit, but it's going to be less than it was before. So you as firm one, who is currently getting all of the business, has no incentive to lower their price. You also don't have an incentive to raise your price. And so we have an equilibrium. Again, the big difference here with asymmetric competition versus symmetric competition is that firm one is actually getting a profit. So Bertrand competition doesn't actually claim or doesn't actually make a prediction that each of the firms will get no profit whatsoever. That's only really the case when we have symmetric firms. As soon as we have any sort of asymmetry whatsoever, we do see one of the firms, the more competitive of the firms, making a profit. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Take care.